This is our topic. Non-technologic innovation. Uh, in our research, we discovered eight types of contexts of innovation. One only is technology. And this is in line with documents OECD and the European Union, but not in line with statistics. Because statistics are not able to cover the soft part of the story. Business programs, organizational style addressing processes rather than subordination. Management style addressing cooperation rather than commanding. Management process making this possible. Methods like the bonus which are going to be taught in our Slovenian schools next year. The agreement has been reached uh, 10 days ago. Uh, business process. Business process as an innovation was addressed by IBM four years ago only in the worldwide research. And 80% of managers said yes, that's important. 20% said yes, and wor I'm working on it. 20%. Nobody except, sorry to say, my group, has addressed innovation of values, and I hope you will come along. Because these seven types of non-technological innovations make room for sense-making technological innovation, because they make room for what we call requisite holism. Total holism is impossible. Specialists alone only can attain fictitious holism, because they can only cover one single viewpoint. There is too much knowledge around for the number of professions to be less than 100,000, according to people who work on, on uh, schools. So what we try to find something which is covering all crucial viewpoints in synergy, but very few professions address synergy. And uh, uh, thousands of years of research on nature, which was called science, as the only one was done by specialists. Wonderful job, but no synergies. But if you don't consider synergy, you will not have salt in your soup, but two poisons. So without requisite holism based on interdisciplinary creative cooperation, like we are addressing here today, doesn't give us very poor chances for uh, survival. So to me, ecosystem is the one way of expressing the requisite holism about humans and nature. And humans are only a small but very influential part of nature. And in the conference on social responsibility, which we had in early March this year, one of the conclusions was, let's take care of this sentence. Nature on the planet Earth can live without humans. Humans cannot live without healthy nature. And uh, this, is, this is the point. Uh, for the entire period of recent decades under neoliberalism, businesses were totally entitled to be one-sided. And so were politicians, because they are per parties. Parties, which means partial. They're not per holes. The world on its own says so. Uh, and the civil initiatives which are represented in, in your body of our politics, Mr. President, are the ones we can, which can help better. In Slovenia, we have about 70 parties, but 23,000 NGOs. All of them do a very important job, which is giving creative substance to the free time. <coughs> be them uh, firefighters or sportsmen or singers, all of them make people more creative. All of them can press, like, like we see now, pressing in France and around Europe for things which cannot be changed, unfortunately. But still, this is the pressure which can take place, uh, including this chamber. So this is the point, and these are some data um, summarizing the, the point. Until 1820, when the industrialization was started uh, being followed by statistics, the growth of GDP was 3% per millennium, not per year. 3% per millennium. Then nature was able to survive. 
And people were able to survive as long as they did because these were hungry times at the same time. Until this uh, century, there was a war in Europe every second year for seven centuries, uh, fighting for the natural resource and for survival. Then the desertion came, and in only less than two centuries, the growth was 5,500%. Can the nature take it? If you only take the period after the Second World War, humankind has grown two and a half times in number. And we use seven times more of nature. Do we have a bigger planet? I was in Novosibirsk, a museum of no longer existing minerals. No longer existing minerals. Which means the nature is very much out. And how can then the further growth of production take place? Uh, people in Slovenia published that if the speed of the growth of production of the recent two, three decades goes on, by the end of this century, we have 80 times more production from what and for whom. Which needs will be covered? And with the current situation, according to people who work on that, we as humankind put in the air 4 million tons CO2 per hour. We put in the soil 1.7 tons, million tons, of chemicals in our soil. And we cut off 1,500 hectares of wood per hour. And uh, this covers also the growth of temperature. And if tem uh, they say if temperature goes up for further two or three degrees centigrade, not only CO2, but methane, which is now frozen in Siberia, will no longer be frozen. And in one hour, no person around the world can breathe any longer. So it's a point of survival which we are addressing here. And we cannot be successful if we don't attain recreationalism, which we cannot attain without involvement of many in interdisciplinary cooperation. Business and politicians are not enough. Civil initiative can help, and thank you for war in action. <laughs>